This podcast is sponsored by eBay Canada. eBay Canada has been supporting Canadian small business retailers for 25 years. With their up and running program, you can access eBay's 180 plus million buyers in 190 countries around the world. With up and running, there are no listing fees on up to 200 listings per month, and you only pay fees when you sell. As part of the eBay community, you get real time advice and inspiration and access to powerful selling tools and insights. Go to ebay.ca forward slash up and running, stay local, and sell global. Welcome to Canada's Podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. On today's show with uh, Calgary's podcast, I have Mark Tewksbury, who is the um, he is owner of Great Traits with Debbie Muir, and he's also a former Olympic gold medalist in swimming. Thanks for joining us today, Mark. Hi, Mario. Hi. So, Mark, let me just start by asking just a little bit about Great Traits. Uh, can you give me a little history behind it, how you started it, and how you and Debbie started it, and uh, what you guys do? Sure. So, actually, yesterday, uh, July 30th, was the 28th anniversary of me winning gold in Barcelona. Wow. So, yeah. And, and without knowing it, the year before that win was actually when Great Traits started informally because it's when I partnered with Debbie Muir, one of the world's greatest synchronized swimming coaches, to be kind of my secret weapon when I had to make an, uh, just a, an, an enormous uh, improvement if I had any chance of winning the Olympics. And back in that time, it was really radical to bring a woman into a male-dominated uh, swimming world. Um, for me to take this big risk, we had really not much support, but we just believed that you know this, this could work. And after I won the Olympics, dropped 1.2 seconds, had that magical moment, Debbie and I actually went away and we thought, what did we do that transcended both synchronized swimming and swimming that were just the fundamental elements that allowed that achievement to happen? We actually have a transcript of that for back right after the Olympics. We went into Banff and the mountains to do it. And it just kind of stayed in a box for years. And it was around 2007 that Debbie and I took that. She also had written a, a manuscript uh, about sort of leading from a coaching point of view. And all of this came together to create our business Great Traits in 2008. And basically, we're a leadership development company. Um, we're really inspired by how we won the Olympics, what we did, but also the whole idea behind high performance sport and how we approach training in general. And I think that makes us really unique as a company. Who do you guys deal with uh, typically uh, uh, in, in the stuff that you do? So for the first sort of 10 years of our business, um, we went to, to market with a book in 2008 called The Great Traits of Champions, Fundamentals for Achievers, Leaders, and Legacy Leavers. And in there, basically each of those sections, achievement, leadership, and legacy, each had eight fundamental traits. So there was a sort of a curriculum or a, a creative um, sort of template of 24 great traits. So we would talk to companies like Bell or Shoppers Drug Mart or HBC or the Ontario Medical Association or Own the Podium, all kinds of different companies and associations, listen to their needs and kind of use that 24 traits as a plug and play. And so depending on their outcomes, we chose a trait that aligned with that. And we typically do three or four traits in a program. Programs lasted from 90 minutes to three hours. Interactive, really fun, inspiring, uh, a bit of, of activity. So it's not just sitting and being talked to, um, but it was still a one and done. You know, it's still that sort of come in, be inspired, but to really change behavior, three hours isn't gonna do it. Um, so a couple of years ago, we decided to go to market with a 12 week leadership development training program that's really intense where we teach people all 24 of the great traits. So they leave with this incredibly robust repertoire of leadership tools that they can use for the rest of their careers. Okay, and, and what level are you dealing with in people in these companies? It's a great question. Um, funny enough, when we started, because I'm doing most of the sales and business development right now, and I know sort of m more senior level people, we had a lot of head of HR, uh, senior managers, even some CEOs. They all loved it, got a lot out of it, because I guess our belief is, even if you are the CEO, when you go back to foundational skills and sharpen those, 
you're going to improve your performance no matter who you are and where you are on your career pathway. That being said, our ideal client is really the emerging new leader, somebody that's got a long runway ahead of them, that this stuff is just going to be so fundamental and foundational, it's going to change their pathway as a leader forever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we've had a tough time, obviously, uh, <laughs> in the last, since March with, uh, with COVID. Uh, how has that impacted your business, uh, uh, just out of curiosity? Well, at first, it, it killed the business in a way because we were still dependent upon some live days and all of what I do from the Olympics and bringing tens of thousands of people together to giving conferences where hundreds of people are together. It always involved people coming together. Um, thankfully, our program, which we, you know, we knew we had to sort of pivot a couple of years ago, it was already delivered on Zoom and Slack, 85% of it. So we've been on Zoom for a couple of years, way before people knew about it. If only I'd bought stock. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> All of the right? oh, um, so it just made us maybe accelerate our plans to go 100% uh, virtual, um, which we've been able to do. So we spent the past couple months just re rejigging our program and we go to market again in September. And then it's sort of full steam ahead. I think that what it's actually enabled us to do is bring the cost down a little bit, make it even more accessible. And what's really fun is, you know, I used to have to, before I would do it, we'd do a class in Toronto of 20 people and a class in Calgary of 20 people. And now we can just do a class and it can be as many people as, as we can facilitate, but people can come from anywhere all over the world. So really excited to grow our business. Although the competition is going to be fierce, I think that we've got some really unique things that will help us navigate that. Well, when you look at uh, the business world now, uh, you know, and obviously a lot of uh, companies are cutting back and scaling back on stuff. I, I would imagine, you know, some of it might be training, right, uh, that they cut back on. Uh, how do you approach those companies? Uh, you know, how, what's your sales pitch to them to, uh, to tell them that, hey, you shouldn't be cutting back on development and, and uh, personal development and leadership at this time? Oh, well, I think it's a time to double down on that because I think it's a time where people need, especially what we have is a guided pathway. So people need some certainty right now. They need to know what to do. And I think somebody taking you through a process that gives you a bit of grounding in that builds confidence for people that really need it at this moment. I also think working from home and all the things that have changed, it's changed our level of engagement. And yeah. if you've got some high performers and some people that you really want to make sure you're showing them that we believe in you and this is the time to invest, make sure that they know that. Yeah. Now you're an entrepreneur yourself, obviously. Uh, what, you know, what's your best piece of advice right now for entrepreneurs uh, who are struggling uh, through this time? Well, I think one for just your state of mind, I think you have to just uh, unfortunately embrace the unknown and the uncertainty. And it's really hard. It's against our, I think, our, our general um, well-being as humans. We like to know what's going to happen. We crave certainty. If we don't, we have that flight mode going on. But I think there's a, a level of awareness that's like, okay, I have to let myself feel what I'm feeling and go through this and just know I may not know how it's going to look. I think it's a bit of day by day, Mario. I think it's... Um, you know, I think you can plan a bit for the future, which I'm all about planning, but it's that contradiction of also letting that go and doing what you have to do in the moment to survive, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Now, obviously, being a, a former athlete, um, can you talk a little bit about the importance, of, you know, as athletes learn how to deal with failure, I guess, for lack of a better word, how to deal with challenges and obstacles. Can you talk a little bit about that and the importance of that, especially for entrepreneurs in these days? Well, that's a great question, Mario, because I should have talked about resiliency before, because that's what this period really needs. And such a cliche, but it is the cliche because it's true. You know, you learn more through these challenging, difficult times than you do when things are going well. And that's just a fundamental sort of core strength of, of, I think, coming through the high performance pathway as an athlete is that it wasn't, even though the pathway looks linear, it isn't. It's more like a roller coaster that goes up and down and there's yeah. constantly going out there and, and refining what you did because something didn't work. And so it becomes a real growth mindset. And I think that's would be super useful for people right now, that resiliency and knowing that, okay, I'm not sure what tomorrow's gonna bring, but if I take action 
and I'm aware, then I can be responsive. So if something worked, I'll keep doing it. If something doesn't work, I'll switch and try something else. Yeah. And that's a fundamental principle of high performance sport. This podcast is sponsored by eBay Canada. eBay Canada is powering Canadian small businesses. Go to ebay.ca forward slash up and running to open your new global e-commerce business. So, so Mark, you're, you're, uh, you're a born and raised Calgarian, right? I am. Okay, then you moved uh, to Toronto for a while? Or? I've been all over. I moved actually originally from Calgary in 1994 to Sydney, Australia. Then I moved back to Canada to be part of the Canadian or International Olympic Committee commissions. I had to live in the country I competed in. Um, yeah. I settled in Toronto and then moved to Montreal. Have been splitting my time between Toronto and Calgary for the past number of years. But just this week, I moved out of Toronto completely. So I'm 100% back in Calgary for the first time since 19. 1994. It's oh, kind wow. of a, yeah, it's a crazy feeling. <laughs> no kidding, eh? So I was going to ask you, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're well connected in, uh, in uh, the business community, in the sports community. What's the sense and feel you get these days of talking to people in Calgary? Uh, and what's their mood like? I think it depends who you talk to. And that's what's so interesting about this period that we're going through. There's people whose businesses I know have just been um, really challenged. I won't say decimated yet, but if office buildings don't come back soon, for example, my brother's supplies, uh, he's got a small uh, coffee business that services all of those towers. Well, you know, we're in month number five or six of no towers to service. So there's people going through that. I've got another friend that has a, a small um, food enterprise at Calgary Farmer's Market, and they've never been busier with, with people ordering and, and picking up takeaway. So really depends what sector you're in. Um, it's, I, I see that it's going to be some challenging times ahead, though, for sure, Mario. Okay. Let, let's uh, swing into some sports-related questions. And, and just for people's uh, benefit... <laughs> Mark and I go way back to, oh gosh, the mid-80s, I guess, when Mark was a swimmer at the University of Calgary with the Dinos uh, program, and then obviously on to international and Olympic fame, et cetera. So I've known Mark since those days. Mark, what, in terms of uh, uh, your success, I guess, and where you are now, tell me the role that sports plays in that. Sure. And first of all, Mario, I think you were my very first Calgary Herald interview of my entire <laughs> life. And I remember you wrote something because I said something pretty, I don't know, kind of, uh, you said he doesn't um, hold, hold, hold back any punches or something like that. And I remember going, oh, <laughs> doesn't pull any punches. That was it. He doesn't pull any punches because I commented on a former coach of something that wasn't pleasant that had happened. Oh. So I'll never forget that. Um, I mean, listen, sport has so shaped who I am. It, um, I, I've distilled my experience, the vast experience I've had and together with Debbie, you know, basically created our whole business around those concepts. We've taken not just those concepts of what we did, but how I learned to train, the daily practice, the application of micro skills learned in isolation and then integrated back into my, my training life. The idea of a pathway of evolution, of constantly kind of going to the next level. So all of those things have shaped who I am. And then on the other side of my life, I was a closeted gay person and winning the Olympics back in 1992. Ultimately, I wouldn't realize at the time, but it gave me an enormous platform for social change. And thankfully, I, I took the opportunity in 1998 to come out. 22 years ago, as you know, it was a yeah. huge deal. The world looked really different. And I'm seeing the rewards of that today. We're seeing, you know, young out athletes that it's just accepted and, and they have great sport careers. And I'm so proud that that has happened for the next generation. Well, since you brought it up, I was wondering, were you worried at that time that that would impact your career uh, going forward? A thousand percent. I actually was prepared to lose all of my corporate work back in 1998. Yeah. I kind of pivoted and I, I came out via a one-man show. So I thought that I was going to have to enter the theater world, sell tickets and do all of that. And in the end, it didn't work that way. I, I certainly, some things fell away. Um, some people just wouldn't request me. I wouldn't know that I lost the business. They would just, yeah. you know, no longer book me as a speaker. But lots, lots of opportunity opened up. And I think that's, I guess, even going through this time right now, 
I know that as brutal and hard as it is, something will happen that we don't expect. And, and often that thing is positive and, and better than we could have imagined. And that yes. was the case with me coming out. Okay. So do you still swim? <laughs> <laughs> not really if, if, if i lived in the local pool and just uh <laughs> for sure i don't do that and it's only because of the smell of chlorine yeah oh really uh, it's just too, it's like whoa and and you know it's hard for me to just swim in a pool recreationally right like it's i, I that was my my training ground so I, I but in an ocean i love it like if we're on holiday we've gone to spain for a couple of years or greece and i will swim every day in the in the mediterranean ocean or somewhere like that okay then super then so uh you know when you look at uh, your uh, your sports background and you go back in time like how difficult like i know swimmers like you guys must have been up at five in the morning, right? Uh, swimming. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're, oh yeah, at least sometimes earlier. Sometimes the number was four. <laughs> so, what, was the, what was the motivation there? Like when you look back in time, how do you get that motivation to get up that early and to go to the pool and, and to practice like crazy when you're, I don't know, like 13, 14, 15 years old? I mean, there's great reward from that sort of routine and discipline and effort, but that's just part of the deal. It's like, you know, you have to file a story every day when you work for the Herald. I yeah. got to get up and do two workouts a day if I want to go to the Olympics and be part of the Calgary Swim Club. And the reason we have to get up so early is because in swimming, we have heats and finals. So you have to learn to swim in the morning to yeah. make the final in the evening where you can win the medals. And unfortunately, when we're in school, the only time to do that in the morning is before school starts. So it makes for a very early sport. Okay, you still keep in touch with all the old uh, former Olympic swimmers? Uh, Some. I mean, it's been all, you know, very long time. So we love to run e into each other. And every once in a while, certainly via social media, it's much easier to, to catch up and see what people are doing. But remember, you know, I was done in 1992. So like yeah. none of these okay. mechanisms even to stay in touch were around back then. Okay, then. So when you look at this current time and obviously the difficulty people are going through, do you have a message uh, uh, for business owners or uh, professionals out there uh, about getting through this time? Well, I think we've touched on some of them and maybe I'll just sort of pick some of them and, and reiterate. You know, I think your question about resiliency was a great one and just that um, knowing we will get through this, there's some comfort, I think, in knowing, my gosh, no one's alone. You know, I think all of us have gone through a crisis of some nature in our life, but usually yeah. it's just ours. And there is something very different about having a communal crisis and catastrophe that we have to navigate together. Um, I think there's a, a, you know, a take care of yourself element to it because the stress is so high and realizing that <clears throat> because we crave certainty, I'm not knowing what's going on can take more of a toll on us than we realize. So trying to get in that growth mindset and just knowing if I take action, I'll figure out what the next step is, trust in that. And then finally, as hard as it is, something good will come of this. We don't know what it is yet. And I guess in my own life, I'm seeing that I was forced to slow down. I'm forced to consolidate everything into one place. And as hard as that's been, there's also kind of a comfort and grounding that's coming through it. So some good will come through this. And, and what's it like for you being back home, being back in Calgary? I really love it. I'm really shocked at um, how beautiful the city is, especially if you are on a bike. So the bike paths that yeah. go, you know, seven bridges across a river, every bike path I go, it's, it's just so magical to have the running water and the nature around Calgary and really full of surprises. So I'm, I'm enjoying it very much. And what about from the business perspective? Uh, obviously, Calgary is known as a entrepreneurial uh, city. Uh, uh, did you find that? Uh, have you found that over the years? Uh? So most of my business actually has been based in Toronto, but that's going to change now because you know we don't have to be limited to any market. And I, I would love to tap more into that entrepreneurial market in, in Calgary. I think it's uh, Calgary has so much to offer. I'm, I'm definitely going to be much more of a YYC promoter now that I'm 100% back here and, and get a, a little bit more of an understanding of the larger ecosystem. I used to spend so much time hopping around everywhere. I wasn't able to sort of have the same point of view that I will have in the upcoming months. Okay, super then. Great. Well, thanks very much for joining us today, Mark. 
So good to see you, Mario, and, and lovely that you're doing this and happy to speak to entrepreneurs of Canada. Go, Canada, go. All right, super. Thanks very much. That was Mark Tewksbury, who is one of the owners and partners in Great Traits, uh, a development company in Calgary, and uh, with Debbie Muir. And he's also a former Olympic gold medalist. Uh, thanks for joining us on Calgary's podcast. You can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. This podcast is sponsored by eBay Canada. eBay Canada is here to help. They've been supporting Canadian small business retailers for 25 years, and their up-and-running program is getting Canadian businesses online today. Visit ebay.ca forward slash up-and-running. Stay local and sell global with eBay.